Okay, uh, this video is mostly designed for those of you who are in a more or less advanced civil 3D course uh, without having had some of the basics of managing points, uh, feature lines, perhaps parcels or anything else like that. So the rest of you are very welcome to watch it. But I do want to point out uh, the concept that what you're doing in the basic civil 3D class is nothing different than managing geographic information. So that's what, how I'm going to present this here to you. Um, first and foremost in geographic information is to know what coordinate system you're on. Um, and that may be state plane central, it may be lat long, it might be UTM, it could be a county coordinate system. But every county coordinates, every coordinate system is going to be related to another coordinate system by some translation, rotation, rotation, or some other manipulation that gets you on the same coordinate systems. Um, so that's uh, a reality of life that if you know what coordinate systems you are in, you'll be able to then bring it into the other coordinate system. That's one of the precepts of GIS. When you're dealing with GIS, you need to attach to all of your data something called metadata, and that is data about data. So that might be how the data was gathered and what coordinate system it was on, what date the photo was taken, anything like that. So that's the first precept, that you know not only your points in northing, easting, and elevation, or lat, long, ellipsoid height, or whatever, but you know what coordinate system they are in. You can then basically break up the world into a series of cascading data structures, with the first in GIS being the point. The point I like to say in class will have a northing and easting and elevation and a time, because really a lot of things depending uh, cars in a traffic stream, people walking down the block, uh, a waste stream coming out of a treatment plant or out of a smokestack will have some time attached to them. So you have points. Points then will be used to make lines. So a line or an arc will be defined by two points. An arc will be defined by two points and a bulge factor you will see. And this may be a little bit different from what you might be used to. There are other ways to store an arc where an AutoCAD is an arc is stored by a center point, a plane, and then a starting angle, a radius, and a starting angle and an ending angle. All right, so you start with points, you manage them, you then manage lines and arcs, and finally those lines and arcs eventually close upon themselves to make something called polygons. Um, so that's the basics of GIS, that you start with points, lines and arcs, or then polygons, with a little bit of a middle there where you can have something called a path, where you have lines and arcs strung together to make a path where it doesn't close on itself. That's the first basic precept to realize that you are dealing with points, which are going to have some data attached to them, lines, which are defined by points, and then parcels or polygons is a better word to use that are defined by lines and arcs. Why is that important? Well, think about it. Let's say that you move one point in a system. Maybe because you found that the iron was wrong or some other, uh, something else happened that this, this point needed to be moved. Well, if your lines were defined not by the actual location, but by the point name, by moving that one point, you would not have to change anything in your lines and it would, the line would be naturally be moved. Now go to the parcels. And if the parcels were defined as being either to the left or the right of any particular line or arc, when you move your point, 
you move the line or the arc, but your data structure for the polygon would not change. That is one of the fundamentals of GIS, and that is something that Civil 3D and uh, AutoCAD Map uh, start to take advantage of that hadn't been done in the past. So how do you label these things? Well, points get names or numbers. Lines get names and numbers that you deal with them with, but in reality, they are attached to two named or numbered points, the lines are. And then parcels are usually tagged by a center point or a centroid point. And the reason why that centroid point is tagged that way is if it's a if it's in the center of one of these polygons, right? So if it's in the center, if you wiggle the edges a little bit by moving points, which means you move the lines and the arcs, then the fundamental definition of what is in the polygon or the parcel does not change. So those are typically called centroid points, and they're the, the physical center. Uh, you'll see very often in a GIS system, looking down at the timing here, you'll see very often in a GIS system that uh, they also will sometimes tag up or label up the street frontage, and they put two, two parcels there. And I won't even explain to you that there were 29,000 parcels in the city of Champaign oh so many years ago that we tagged twice instead of once. But generally, you're must, much, I want you to know you're much better off just tagging a parcel once. So that are the, that is the basics of GIS, and as we sometimes... Uh, allow students to kind of enter uh, without having had the basics of point management, uh, surface management, which I'll talk about in another video, and line management, that's pretty much it there. If you add to that general discussion the fact that we can always winnow and sort based on data fields that are attached to a point. So as I look down, I'm about 7, 15 minutes, uh, 7 minutes and 15 seconds. I am, you know, let's face it, I appear to be Caucasian. So that puts me into one subgroup. All right, so my name is Mark. My point number is five. I am Caucasian, good, bad, or indifferent. It's what mom and dad made me into. Um, I have some Polish in me, so that I'm also a member of a Polish group. I also have traveled to uh, Africa once in my life, so or a few times in my life. So I'm also a subgroup of a group of people that have traveled to East Africa. Uh, I also am going bald. So that's another piece of data. Now all those individual pieces of data are attached to the point which is Mark. If I attach the data that way, I can then group and sort in any way, shape, or form along one of those data fields. Um, that might be, I'm a tree, I'm an oak, I'm a 12-inch oak, and I might be able to grab and sort along any particular collection thereof. That gets you to why, in effect, one of the most important classes that you just touched on if you're going to be dealing with geographic information and things like Civil 3D or Geopack or whatever else, one of the key things you might want to delve into a little bit more is not so much your access part of Microsoft, but I'm sorry, not so much your Excel portion of Microsoft Office, but your access, which is a database where you have these kind of, this information that is stored based on some keys that you can link back and forth between different uh, data tables. So, to review, it, the basics that we want you all to kind of start thinking about before you get too deep into either or any of these Civil 3D classes are that you manage points, feature lines, and then parcels. And fundamental, the most important thing to manage is the points, and you do that by point groups and point group manager, which is nothing more than a ramped up version of Microsoft Access, Oracle, RBase, DBase, uh, Paradox, any other set of, um, let's see what the database is called, um, relational databases, RDBMSs. All right, we're at 